Hello, this is Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. Today we are going to uh, learn how to continue working with statistical data and to calculate the useful calculations, the core calculations that are just mostly needed when viewing any statistical data set. Typically you'll be interested in the mean value, the average value. A lot of times you'll, you'll want to know the median. Sometimes you'll want to know the standard deviation. Sometimes you'll want to know a few other things. And so the calculator has some really neat built-in functions to do all of this stuff with, with just a few button clicks. So let's go ahead and take care of uh, learning how to do that. Let's go into the Apps menu, up to the Data Matrix Editor, hit Enter. And for the purposes of what we're doing now, let's go ahead and just create a new data set. Let's call it uh, B. You can name it something descriptive if you like. I don't really care, so I'm going to put B. So I have a blank slate. So again, I want to go back to the analogy of grades because uh, when we calculate average values of grades, it's something most students can really wrap their brains around and really understand. So let's just go ahead and type a bunch of grades in here. 52, 53, these are really bad grades. We've got some 70s, some 75, a couple 75s maybe. Got a couple of 80s here, got a couple of... 89s get into the higher grades. We've got several students in the 90s. This class is very good, right? Lots of good studiers, students. And we've got, uh, let's say, 200 people, or two people, I should say, that got a perfect score 100 on the test. So 16 students and just random grades, grades I'm just typing in off the top of my head. All right, now we want to analyze this. So we could graph them, obviously. We can do a histogram. We can do lots of things, but I just want to know what's the average value without actually adding them up and dividing by 16 or whatever. And I want to also learn the standard deviation. And maybe there's some other things that I want to learn too. So like I said, the calculator has a lot of capabilities to do this. So when you're looking at your data, you have to be looking at your data. If you wanted to plot it, you would go to Plot Setup. If you want to calculate stuff, you have to go to the Calculate menu. So you have to hit F5. And you're presented with uh, basically a calculational screen. Now, I've only got one variable there. I've only got one set of data. So you need to go to one variable, right? And it's going to basically change the screen. If you have more than one column, you can go to two variable, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But for now, the Y values are X'd out. The uh, first set of data is the only data we have that's labeling that data X, and so it, it wants to know where that is, just like the plotting. So we put column one, just like you might expect, and we hit enter. Don't worry about the frequency and categories. Everything else is grayed out. It's just doing all of the calculations in one variable, which what I mean by one variable, I mean one column, one set of data that's called X. It's in column one. So we hit enter, and once we do that, we have a nice set of information that pops up. It's all done for you, and it's almost instantaneous. The very first thing is X with a bar on top. This is the mean value. This is the mean value of your entire data set, right? So the mean value on this test, taking everything into consideration, is 84.6875, right? Uh, now, there's some other things that are interesting here. The I'll skip around a little bit. The um, sigma here, you have SX and you have a lowercase sigma X. These are basically standard deviations. So the, the sigma, the Greek letter sigma X, is what we call the population standard deviation. SX is what's called the sample standard deviation. Notice that they're both very, very close. I'm not going to get into the difference between population and standard deviation, but just know that there's two main ways to calculate standard deviation. One leads to this result. The other one leads to this result. Most of the time you're going to be doing the population standard deviation, which is here, but notice these two numbers are almost the same. They're very, very close. So the way you view this is, look, the mean was at 84, and the spread, that's what the standard deviation is, the spread. How far away from the mean was the average sort of grades concentrated? So the average was at 84 with an average spread of about 15, between 14 and 15 here. Statistically, most of the good grades fell within plus or minus 15 from the mean. That's what standard deviation is. The fact that there's two different calculations here is just because your book is going to probably give you two formulas and they're very, very slightly different from one another and so it calculates both of them for you. All right, Sigma X is just the sum of the X values, the sum of the data in our set. Uh, the sum of the squares of the values is listed here. Uh, NSTAT is the number of data values we had. There were 16 grades in the whole set, so there, there you have that. Now the reason it's calculating all this stuff is because a lot of times on a test you're asked to calculate, let's say, the mean value 
um, by hand. So how do you calculate the mean of something? You, you add up the grades and you divide by the number of grades. Well here, since sigma x is calculated, this is the sum of the grades. Here it's telling you how many data points you had. So if you really wanted to kind of show your work, you could write down this is the sum of the values, divide it by 16, and you will get the average value, which is 84. Go ahead and try that and you'll see that that's exactly what it is. Same thing for this guy, sum of x squared. This calculation, when you square each grade and then add them all together, this is used in the calculation of the standard deviation. So if you were trying to show your work, you would need to sum the squares of the x values, and this is already done for you here. So it's kind of like this screen gives you tons of info. The end result of what you care about really is the mean and the standard deviation, but it kind of gives you these intermediate results that are needed for you to reconstruct those calculations on your own. Okay, it also tells you some other facts like the minimum value in your data set. This was the lowest grade we had. Uh, it gives you the first quartile. You can scroll down. That's what the arrow means. Uh, the median was 89. The Q3, the third quartile boundary there, and the maximum value. If you remember back from our box plots, those Q1, median, Q3, and maximum and the minimum values, those were all listed on the plot. So this is really just a summary screen of things that we really have already seen before. A lot of this was displayed in graph form, uh, along with the important things about the average and such. So if you are averaging values, if you took taken some data with the temperature or something like over the period of a year and you wanted to get at some statistical analysis, you'd enter them in here and then you'd go and do the one variable statistical analysis. You'd immediately get the mean and the standard deviation and some other fun facts, which are really the, the most important things here. Now that was what we called one variable statistical data analysis because we only had one data set. Now let's say we actually collected some additional data. Uh, let's go back into the matrix or the data editor. Let's create a new data set. We'll just make it real quick. We'll give it a label. We'll call it uh, E, let's say. And we're taken to the screen where we enter our data. Let's collect some grades. You know, here's 85, here's 86, here's 82. I'm not going to put too many in here. Here's 83, here's, you know, 74. That's all I'm going to put in here. And then on top of that, we also collected the ages of these students. So this person was 16, this person was 16, this person was 15, uh, this person was 13, and this person was 14. So now we have actually two sort of sets of data that are sort of related. The 16-year-old got an 85, this 16-year-old got an 86, this 15-year-old got an 82, and so on. Um, so it may not make sense to plot these so much, I mean, maybe it does, but you can also do data analysis on your data here to see how, you know, how this worked out. So you have some grades and some ages. So we go to the calculate menu just like before, and you have the choice. A minute ago we were doing one variable analysis because we only had one column of data. Here we are going to do two variable analysis. Now it needs to know where the data is, what columns. So we'll type in column one for this guy. We'll go down and we need to do column two. So we'll do C2. So we're calling the X data column one, we're calling the Y data column two. We're not changing anything else, we hit save, and then everything pops up here. And here's our statistical data. Notice that it labels it X and Y because we have uh, the guys that we labeled according to column one and column two. The mean value of the X data, which was the grades, is 82. The mean value of the y data, which was the ages of the student, was 14.8 years old. The sum of the x values was this, the sum of the squares of the x values was this, the sum of the y values was this, and the sum of the y squared values is this. Um, it also calculates the, uh, the sum of the x times the y values, which is sometimes used as well. We have this, the uh, sample standard deviation in x and y. We also have the population standard deviation here. And notice that they're pretty simple. The standard deviation in X, this was 4.7, this is 4.2. Standard deviation in Y was 1.3, 1.1. So you see there's two different ways to calculate standard deviation. They're going to yield very similar results. For the, um, the whole entire data set, there's only five rows, really. So there's five here. The minimum value of X, the minimum grade, was 74. The minimum age was 13. The uh, maximum grade was 86. The maximum age was 16. 
And that's basically all that we calculate there. So it gives you basically at a glance the mean values, the standard deviations of each column of data that you have along with some extra information like the x squareds needed to sort of retrace the calculator's work and calculate these things by hand. So these are used in their own right a little bit. And that's basically all I wanted to say about multivariable data analysis. It has such a hard sounding name but it just means you have two columns of data and you'd like to calculate the standard deviation and the mean at the same time because you'd like to look at them side by side it's useful to know that hey the uh, average grade was an 82 the average A's was 14 and that's an that's an interesting statistic to know especially if you had a large class of people it would be nice to know some some average values like that so don't hesitate to use the calculator in two variable mode if you have more than one column of data